Good morning. This morning we're looking at example 2 of section 7.1, approximating definite integrals as sums of business calculus with Excel. In example 2 we're looking at the area under f of x equals x times 4 minus x. That will intersect the x-axis at 0 and at 4. If the number of intervals is n, then each interval is delta x wide, or 4 minus 0 divided by n wide. The left side of the ith interval is 0, the starting point, plus i times the width of the interval, so i times delta x. And the midpoint of the ith interval is 0, plus i times delta x. That gets us to the left side, minus delta x over 2. That's half an interval going back. The area of the rectangle containing x sub i is f of x sub i times delta x. If we now look at example 2, in example 2 we're trying to find the area under that curve with 100 rectangles. So if I look at my formulas, the width of an interval is the ending point minus the starting point divided by the number of intervals. x sub i is the starting point plus i times the width of the interval f of x sub i is going to be x times 4 minus x. If I look at the area of a rectangle, it's going to be the height of the rectangle times the width, and the summed area is the sum of the areas from the first rectangle down to whichever one we're at. We're going to use offset and say the final area is going to be cell E6, going down however many rows we need for the number of intervals, so 100. So this is the basic setup we're going to use for doing Riemann sums, and we'll repeat it a whole lot of times, just changing the function. If I go back to without the formulas, now all I have to do is instead of two rows, I'd like a hundred rows. Right now the hundredth row is empty, so it's zero. So I'm just going to highlight rows for one and two, quick fill down until I get to a hundred. It doesn't matter if I go past a hundred as long as I get to a hundred. The hundredth row, I get 10.6656, which is what delta x which is what came up as the area. So my approximation of the area is 10.6656. We move to a more accurate estimate. So I have the same basic setup. The difference here is I filled in lots more rows. If I wanted to do, instead of 100 intervals, I'm going to do 1,000 intervals. Well, that makes each interval 1 tenth as wide. Notice that shows up in f of x. And, but I get 10.666656. I get a better estimate that way. You'll notice the formulas are exactly the same as what they were before. I simply go down to 1,000 rows rather than 100 rows. And my offset, I'm going to go down as many rows as I have. If I want a more accurate answer, I'm just going to use the midpoint rule rather than the right-hand rule. If we think about what happens in general, we're looking at finding the area under f of x between xi minus 1 and xi. What we've done so far is find that area by drawing a rectangle from the right-hand side, and we see if the function is either increasing or decreasing, that's going to be a relatively big area. We would do better if instead we made the height of the rectangle the value of the function at the midpoint. So we're going to want to make our starting point halfway across the interval. If we look at that and start with we had done 100 subintervals, we get 10.6672. If I look at my formulas, if I look at my formulas, what we'll see that xn changes in this case, we still have what we've been doing the base point plus the number of intervals times the width of the interval, but we're backing up half an interval because we want to be in the midpoint of the interval. All of the entries in the rest of the Excel sheet 
wind up being character for character the same thing. We've just changed where we're evaluating. We're still evaluating at the function, finding the rectangle as the height times the width, and adding up those. So when I look at 100 intervals, when I go back and unshow formulas, 100 intervals gave me 10.6672. When I had initially started out, I had 10.6656. We will find out later the correct answer is 10 and 2 thirds. So this is 1,000th off. And this is about half as far off. And so it's a more accurate interval, a more accurate measurement of the area under the interval. Once again, we can make it more accurate by increasing the number of subintervals. And now we get 10.666672. So we approximate by doing more and more intervals to get better and better approximations and use the midpoint for the best approximation. Thank you.